All right, well, in this particular video, of course, uh, we're gonna go over consciousness and what it actually means. Um, I'm actually pretty, I'm actually excited about this one. All right, keep watching. All right, welcome back. Of course, if you're new to the channel, uh, consider subscribing. What I go over, of course, in the content is esoteric and exoteric research in retrospect to how it influences you and how by being on a more pious lifestyle, how that can help you in your soul journey on obtaining the mysteries of the light or getting back to your inheritance, okay? So in this particular video, of course, we mentioned that we're gonna go over consciousness. Now, according to uh, mainstream, uh, consciousness is the state of being aware of something. Okay, according to this definition that we have on the screen here. But what I wanna do is from a practitioner perspective, of course, kinda give you uh, some uh, new study uh, tips, of course, on how to kinda like be aware of possibly where you are. Now, if you're familiar with uh, some of these previous videos, of course, you'll see that I've been going over uh, something about uh, different uh, densities, levels, or uh, dimensions, so to speak, and how by listening to some incorrect information, of course, how that led to the fall uh, of, 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 of so-called um, beings, of course, into these lower worlds or these lower experiences or these lower experiences. So I want to expound on that information in this particular video by possibly giving you the tools that you might need to kind of see how maybe you've entered into any of these lower worlds if that, um, if that pertains to you, okay? So like I said, in this particular video, we're doing what is consciousness, all right? So the first thing that I want to go over, of course, is based on um, my research, it appears that sight plus sound equals the words that you speak, okay? So whatever it is that you are visually looking at and then whatever you are hearing um, in conjunction with that, I think these two coming together will in some way equal the words that you speak. And this is very, very important, especially when we precept that with Genesis and in Genesis uh, chapter three, if we reflect here a moment, you know there was a uh, there was a story about the man and the and the woman, so to speak, and how the woman listened to something, and then it caused something to happen, which got them reduced from the position that they were in and placed in lower positions. Okay, lower positions. So then, when someone was actually looking for them, then the first thing that was said uh, was what? Who told thee thou was naked, right? So then it looks like this sight and sound equals the words that you are saying. So it's very possible that while um, you know, there was something that was taking place with Adam, obviously, that caused this situation that turned into them being naked and things taking place from there, okay? So it looks like the sight and the sound um, equals the uh, words that you actually say. And then those words, okay, those words appear to, if you times that by something called observation and participation, then it looks like that gives you pixels. Now, the reason why I'm calling this pixels, um, if you think about like a checkerboard, um, you know, you'll realize, of course, or if anybody is familiar with any of these design softwares, like dealing with uh, photography or graphic design or any of this kind of stuff, not saying that I'm promoting any of that, but what it does is it actually kind of deals with pixels. So it looks like, let me see if I can find um, a board here real quick uh, to put up on the screen here. I don't know why I didn't already do that. So let me see here. Let me see if I can find a checkerboard illustration so I can put that on the screen for you so you can kind of see it. All right, so here's something. Uh, just bear with me here, let me, right. oh, 
know about the quality of this, but I want to just put this, this, might, this quality might not be that good, but I want to put this on the screen here for you so you can kind of get an idea of what, we're, of what we're talking about when I say pixels being placed on a board. Now, uh, I don't know what the, oh, this quality doesn't look that bad. Okay, so check this out. So if you think about the words that you are saying, okay, if you think about the words that you are saying, and then you take the words and you times it by your, what you are observing and what you are participating in. What you are observing and what you are participating in. So let's expound on this a little bit more. So uh, here, of course, we have uh, what is observation participation, right? And it says it's um, kind of someone who is in a social setting, some form of a group, kind of kind of um, engaged in certain types of behaviors or interactions based on these particular contaminating associations, it appears. So if you are caught up in associations and so forth, whether it be um, in any of these types of things that are taking place, it looks like your words times what you are doing in an observation participation principle type of format actually equals pixels. And then those pixels, of course, are placed on a board. Okay, so the pixels are placed on a board that produces what you might call dreams. Okay, now this is interesting now. So those pixels that we were talking about based on what? The, the, the things that you visually look at, uh, the, the stuff that you hear, right? It, that produces words. This is what we're going over. That produces words. And then what ends up happening, of course, is those words times observation participation actually produces something called pixels. And those pixels are placed on a board that produces your dreams. Now, let me try to see if I can make this make sense. So, so say if someone is observing you, okay? Say if we have uh, something such as like unto this right here. So in this, this is from um, the uh, Gnostic religion. I'll leave all of the resources, of course, underneath the like button for you uh, so you can seek out this information on your own uh, in your uh, soul journey. But notice here, let me see if I can get the arrow here again for you. So notice here how it gets into the archons counter this action, okay? It is countering the action of something, it's countering the actions of the mother, okay? Because there's a redemption process that is trying to take place with those who are trapped, where? In the lower worlds, okay? In these lower worlds, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a redemption process that is taking place, but then what you end up happening, of course, is you have these particular... Um, you have these particular archons who are countering that particular uh, thing that's taking place with their equally continuous counterfeit spirit. So when we think about something uh, like a spirit is something like a mind or something along those lines, but it's counterfeit. It's not something that is for your benefit, but then it looks like what this counterfeit stuff does is it tries to enter the souls or it enters the souls overgrows, hardens it, closes them, weighs them down, right? And leads them uh, uh, astray to works of evil here and thus making them impotent to know. And the word impotent means to resurrect something or to lift something up. And if you notice in the previous videos, how we've been talking about neuron regeneration. And if we think about something that is weighing something down, if you look at this illustration here, um, let me see if I can get the arrow pointed at this here. Let me turn this around. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, so there's, if I'm pointing at this glob of stuff that looks like it's at the end of this particular illustration here, this is a, this is a, a, a neuron, right? So when you think about the stuff that you carry around with you. And I'm not talking about like physically holding something, but like, you know, we have the stuff that is talking about uh, in this particular illustration here uh, at the bottom down here. It says, 
you know, you have physical body intelligence and then you have this hard drive of cellular memories. So this could be, you know, false associations, uh, you know, contaminating, uh, you know, associations. It could be what somebody is thinking about you, said about you. But it's just it looks like it's a catalog of information that you are literally carrying around because of this counterfeit spirit that enters into the soul and it leads people astray and makes them impotent to know because you're focused on the observation and participation principle, which is behaviors in response to what you are actually caught up in in your day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, and year-to-year activities, okay? So what this is actually doing is it's producing pixels It's actually producing pixels that are placed on a board that you call dreams or that is called dreams. Let me share something to you here. This is from the uh, cosmic memory. And I'll leave this, uh, of course, underneath the like button for you. It says, thus, physical man has developed from double sexedness to single sexedness. And remember, uh, in, in a previous video, how I was talking about these this creation and how there are those that were created in the image and it says they were male and female at that time and then as things progressed on of course then it looks like this particular passage from cosmic memory is expounding on that a little bit more so let me continue reading here it says thus physical man has developed from double sexedness to single sexedness to the separation into male and female so now they're separate here uh, instead of being one It says, in this way, man has become a spiritual being of the kind which he is now. But one must not suppose that no beings which possess cognition had been in contact with the earth before then. It says, when one follows the Akasha Chronicle, it does indeed appear that in the first Lemurian period, later physical man, because of his double sex, was a totally different being from that which one today designates as man, right? It says he could not connect any sensory perceptions with thoughts, right? He couldn't connect the things that you are sensing uh, perception with, with the thoughts that you are having. This is key here. It says he did not think his life was one of impulses. It says his soul expressed itself only in instincts, okay, in appetites, in animal desires, and so on. It says his consciousness was dreamlike. He lived in dullness. This is very, very important because these particular archons that we were talking about, the ones that are observing and monitoring uh, uh, behaviors of the people to uh, make them more impotent to know, it appears like what they're actually doing here. uh, Let me pull up this illustration again here. Uh, let's see here, dream like, there we go. So it appears what they're doing is trying to reduce you to an animal level here because see here where it says his soul expressed itself only in instincts, in appetites, in animal desires, and so on. So it looks like that is the goal of these particular archons, of course, that look to make you impotent to know because they don't want you to raise up something from within because they have their teams that are set up that they're actually trying to keep their foot on the so-called oil that's supposed to rise up within you because the oil, in, if Christ in Greek means oil, okay? I don't know if you knew that, but the word Christ in Greek means oil. So you'll see here we have the swan here that has the foot on the fish pre- preventing it from rising, making it impotent to know. Do you see that? Making it impotent to know. So this is what we have going on here in terms of the dreams Uh, So the pixels are placed on a board that produces dreams. All right, next up, we have the dreams plus adherence equals the experience that you're having. So let's look to see what the word adherence means. So it looks like here, the word adherence means what are you sticking to? And remember in earlier videos, I keep talking about disconnecting from dogmas and set creeds, okay? So that's a form of adhering to something. So it looks like here, that the particular dreams plus what you're adherence, adhering to is actually creating your experience. It's actually creating your experience, okay? And then in this earlier 
illustration here, of course, we see that those experiences are possibly down here in the personality matrix. And remember in the um, book of Revelations, it talks about the woman that righted the scarlet red beast. The scarlet, well, it says the scarlet beast, but the word scarlet is red. So that means that they're, they're riding on top of you down here in the subconscious mind, which means what? Automatic processes. Isn't that what we went over when we started talking about routines? Okay, so you have those that are observing you. This is the observation participation principle. You have those that are observing you, right? And one, and the goal is to make you impotent to know because they're not interested in you knowing your perfection. Okay, they're trying to prevent you from rising something up from within you. And then they have their actual teams, of course, that are set up to keep the foot on the tail so you would not be able to what? Master the senses. And you see here how that horse that's above all the other horses there has the ear on there. And that looks like the main tool that is used to create this process of you placing pixels on a board that is dictating your experience and keeping you in a dreamlike state um, and causing you to be impotent to actually know. So it looks like what we have is that your consciousness is just a series of dots that are just mirrored based upon what you are actually aware of. So it looks like the goal of the civilization of deception is to actually just keep you in a, a condition of, of ignorance here, all right? And this is very key. Uh, let, me, let me show you this here. So this is an illustration here, uh, and I'll leave this resource underneath the, the like button for you here. Um, but this is what it says. It says, history, if we, uh, were, if we are to understand the importance of the indigo identity, we must reclaim the lost history of our lineage in other worlds. Okay, remember how in uh, earlier videos I, I, I keep expressing this, how you could potentially build up yourself from within through this process of neural, uh, neuron regeneration, and then you can reach the highest positions within yourself and possibly within something else. And remember it says in the book of Revelations that there are those that are interested in cutting a specific group off so they will not actually become a nation and that makes sense when we start thinking about these particular uh, archons here who, whose goal is to make you impotent to know. So yeah, the, the goal there is to make you impotent to know. So it looks, look, we'll go back to this uh, illustration here uh, that I had up here. Now, give me one second. So this is what it's saying here. So you, you got to understand what your lineage is in other worlds, all right? So it says the multidimensional reality model helps us to understand that our planet and universe represents one harmonic of matter density and this implies the existence of other universes within other dimensions and harmonics of matter. Ancient records and mythologies uh, in, in, woo, intimate interaction with visitors from other worlds. Okay? Within the multidimensional model, the angels of old and contemporary ETs fall into the same category of interdimensional contact. It says, to understand the identity of indigos, we must understand our own interdimensional, interstellar heritage. We will discover that humanity itself emerged from other world systems in higher dimensional harmonics of matter. Okay, and if some of you might not be familiar with this kind of information, you're sitting, you, you might not be familiar with Hebrews 1 and 2 when it says, by whom he made the worlds, plural there. And then you have texts such as like, uh, onto this one here in, in Chronicles, Second Chronicles here, and you can also find this in, in, uh, in Kings as well, but it says, uh, but uh, will God in very, uh, very deep dwell with men on the earth? It says, behold, heaven, right? Singular there, and the heaven of heavens, plural there, cannot contain thee. So then it looks like we have a lot going on when we have this heaven situation and then we even have this in the book of Psalms where it says the heaven, even the heavens, plural, are the Lord's, but the earth had he given to the children of men. Okay, so that's what I wanted to go over in this particular video. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of being aware of where you are. And then some of us are possibly having dreams, but not necessarily understanding how we are actually 
allowing something to create those particular images for us. So then what we might end up having is something might take a while. So based upon whatever it is that you're saying, whatever it is that you're participating in, it might take a series of days or weeks or whatever for something to be put together, to be placed on this board, to present it into an experience. And then we don't want that to possibly lead you astray because of um, what you are participating in. So then you are not necessarily storing your, you're not embodying pieces of your consciousness into ideas that rise. You're only storing them into ideas that fall, which is not helping the experience that you're having. And that's the reason why this particular illustration that I'll leave underneath the like button for you could be very helpful for you to make sure that you are not participating into that which is not going to assist you in the workshops of within, okay? Um, so the first step, of course, obviously, is to be aware of what's happening, and we need to understand that we have those that are actually observing, and then they are purposely doing things through the senses here, through the senses, to get a result from you based upon what you are actually participating in and the words that you are speaking. So if it says, hey, if the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness, right? So some people might not actually be aware of the experiences that they're having whenever they're so-called sleeping at night, all right? And then that might be a problem. So then it's very important that we don't accumulate a bunch of matter. And then this illustration here is, uh, is, is an example of that because then if you're carrying and you keep adding more matter to yourself, then you are being further placed in darkness and it's very possible that this information might not be able to reach you. So my goal, of course, is for you to uh, make sure that through, with the acts of detachment, of course, you're able to remove yourself from those types of associations and false identities and memories and so forth so you can get on this path that we've been talking about in this particular video so the dragon can actually give you the power that you need in order to heal in order to heal okay so if you have any questions or comments about this video you know feel you know please leave them you know in the uh, comment section underneath the, the like button there and we can have a dialogue and then I'll see you in the next video.